Hi boys and girls, I'm Rosemary, and today I'm going to be guiding you uh, through painting this cute little shark. And as everyone knows, it's uh, Shark Week soon, or it is. Um, it seems to be on TV all the time, and that's why these were chosen for you to paint. So um, you can you can do this any way you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I will show you how I did it, and it may give you some ideas, but remember you are the artist and it's up to you how you want to paint it. So uh, don't, don't do the little areas first. We always do the big areas first. So <clears throat> we could start out with the white on the bottom and then the gray on the top. So that's how I'm going to start mine. So you should have a little bowl for water to wash your brush and cover your table where you're sitting. You don't want to get paint on anything. And the paints are all non-toxic, so you don't have to worry about them, but sometimes they might be hard to get out of different surfaces. Um, you should always have a paper towel to dry your brush on. And you really don't need a palette. I have a palette because I work from these big bottles, but you have the strips that you picked up at the library. So I'm going to start with the white. Then you have two brushes, and you could use the little larger of the two brushes. And I'm going to do this belly area under the shark. See? Now, I looked at sharks on TV, I looked at them on, online, and they can be different colors, but right now I decided to do this black and white shark. So I'm gonna pick up some of the white paint, and don't put a lot, a lot of paint in your brush, and you wanna pull it out as far as it'll go. Don't glob it on, and then it won't dry. Put it on, pull it out. Don't dip for more paint in your brush until you run out of the paint that is in your brush because then your paint won't dry. If you put it on properly, it dries very, very fast. So you just kind of make like an oval on the bottom. There's no right or wrong. You can make it big, you can make it small. And again, I'll show you this one that, that I did. Okay, I went almost to his tail and up to his mouth. And the teeth are also going to be white, but I think we'll leave that for after we do the pink. It might be easier to do with the smaller brush after we do the pink. We could do the teeth right on top of the, um, the pink that we put down. So we put the pink down first and then we can put the, um, the white on top of it. So nice and smooth. And when you wash your brush, don't bang them on the bottom of the bowl. Swish them in the water and then dry them on the paper towel. I do it twice to get the paint out and I dry it. You don't want to go from the water to your next color because your paints will run down your piece and then that's what ruins your piece. So now I'm, I'm gonna do the gray and I'm gonna do the gray over everything except maybe the inside of the mouth. But if it gets in that area, it's okay because one color covers another, so you really don't have to worry about it. So now I'm picking up, this is the gray that I gave you. Okay, so you're gonna put the gray on almost all of the rest of the piece. Nice and smooth. Okay, now if you have a hard time with the bigger brush edging up against the white, you can then switch to your smaller brush and edge with the smaller brush because that has a nice point. So whatever you're comfortable working with, but remember always clean your brushes in between because you see how fast the paint dries? It also dries in the hairs of the brush. So if you put your brush down for a minute even, the brush will get hard. So in between colors, I always swoosh I dry, okay, and then I go back to another color. All right, so let's go back to the gray. I'm gonna to try to put it on with the bigger brush. Now the one good thing about you doing this at home is you don't have to be as fast as I am. If I'm going too fast, you can pause the video and you can come back to it at any time. And you have the paints, so it's not like painting in the library where you don't go home with the paints. You have the paints right there in front of you and you could stop if you're tired and you could pick it up at another time. So now there's, there's two different whites in the strip that I gave you. You have regular white, and then you have one that I wrote on that says pearl. <clears throat> Excuse me. The pearl is what's over the top of the colors. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to do that last. So right now I'm just going to continue to do the gray. Okay, nice and smooth. You don't want to leave ridges in your paint because the once it dries, you can't get those lumps and bumps out of it. So just keep spreading it out. Okay, 
I always spread it out as far as it'll go, and then I dip for more paint. Whoops, see now I got a little bit on my gray. Now, if you wipe it right away, it does come off. That's why I should have a paper towel handy, a little water, and then if not, I'll go over it later. I got most of it off, and then if it doesn't all come off, I'll go over it with the white again. So now I'm hoping that some sections are dry that I can then I can pick it up by this fin. Is that what they're called? Fins? Okay, you probably know better than I do. And go over his eye because um, I think I put a note in there, or I don't know if I did or if I didn't. The, um, the eyes can be done with a marker, a black marker. We'll do that at the end, but just make sure that your paints are dry before you do that. And you can work with markers on top of the paints with any colors you want. Say you wanted to put flowers on him, make him, you know, like wild looking. Um, you can, and you could do it with markers, but you just have to make sure that your paint is very dry because if the paint is not dry, the marker will uh, pick up the wetness in the tip and it's like a felt tip, so it's, it's not gonna work well. Uh, while I'm holding it by this fin, I'm gonna then do his tail. And now I should be dry enough up here that I can hold it up here and turn him upside down and get the rest of his tail underneath. Like I said, the edging, if, if you can't do it with the bigger brush, do what you can with the big brush, put it down and pick up the small brush to edge it nicely. Okay, so I don't have to be as perfect as you. I just wanna show you how to go about this. So I'm going to move on here. I think I've got pretty much of it coated. But like I said, make sure there's no white showing the little white spots through your gray. So go back and double check it and look at it from all different angles. Okay. Now that's the gray without the pearl on it. Now you may choose to leave it like that. I just thought the pearl kind of made him look like he's underwater. But like I said, it's your piece and you can do whatever you'd like. I'm going to go back in now. I'm going to do the white. Um, the pink. We'll do the pink next. Now the pink is very sharp pink. If you think it's too bright, the pink, I mixed mine with a little bit of white just to tone it down a little bit. So you can do it directly from the uh, pod that you have, or you could just put a little white in your brush. I'm going to pick up a little white, pick up a little pink, blend them together, and paint that in the mouth area. Now that you should do with your smaller brush. I'm gonna to have to go back with my gray because I didn't go down close enough with the gray. I'm going over the teeth. I like to get a little bit of the pink showing in between the teeth. All right, now I did the pink, but the gray is not all the way down, so I'm gonna wash my brush, and I'm gonna go back with the gray, with the small brush, and edge it a little bit better. So you can go over, one color can go over another as long as it's dry. Just keep that in mind. Don't try to put a wet color over a wet color because they'll smear together and you'll get like a muddy color in between. So your colors need to be dry. And the small brush edges it nicely. I just edge it in there with a the small brush. I'll go back and double check and see if there's any white spots that need to be touched up. And you go back and you spot check it all the time because I see little white areas that I didn't get. Now, let's see what we're going to do next. 
Okay, so um, if you have a toothpick, it probably would work well to go back in. And with the toothpick, I don't know if it'll work with the back end of the brush because we could work with the back end of the brush also. But I think a toothpick would be better. And you take your brush, I think your larger brush handle, you could do with this, and put the teeth on with the back end of the brush. See how this goes on. I think that'll work out pretty well. See with the back end of the brush? I'm using the handle of the brush. And they look like teeth. And that allows the pink to show through. Whoops. That allows the pink to show through the teeth and you get to see inside of the mouth. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Don't they look like teeth? And I did that with the handle of the brush. You dip into the white, you dip into the dark. And now that will take a while to dry, so just watch you don't smear it. Um, if I was you, I would put it aside, let it dry, and then come back to it. You could always pause the video, like I said, and then come back to it. Okay, I think that works out much better than the way I did it on this one. This looks really like teeth, and, and this doesn't look as much like teeth, because this one I painted solid, and this one I did individual, so it really looks like teeth. Got that? Okay. So now I want to show you how I put some color on the piece. Now you have uh, the blue and the light light turquoise colors, this one and this one. Now you're not painting these colors on the piece because we want to keep the gray showing. So what you want to do is you want to put water in your brush. Normally I tell you don't, but you're going to put water in your brush. Put water in, pick up a dot, like say of the blue, with a little bit of water, blend it together and streak some color over him like so and wipe it back with your paper towel. You see what I did there? I just put a little streaked color over him and like it's really, really nothing in the brush, nothing. And then I did the same thing with the turquoise color. I picked up a little bit in the brush, blended in the hairs of the brush. And it's just a little bit of color just to give him some colors of the ocean, reflection of the water on his body and you don't have to do this if you don't want to. And then I wipe it back with the paper towel while it's still wet. And it streaks some color. See the, I don't know if you could really see that, the color that I streaked into it. Okay, all right. And then, okay, so that you, you, you have a lot of color and you could do whatever you want with the colors after. You could use them to paint on anything. They're water-based acrylics and they could be, you could paint on canvas with them. You could paint on material. You could paint on um, uh, wood. You could paint on terracotta flower pots. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or any craft store, I guess Michael's would have them. And they have those little terracotta pots that you put plants in. You could paint with these acrylics on the outside of that too, and then you should seal it, okay? So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you with the pearl. And the pearl is a very, very, very thin coat of pearl. And again, I don't even know if I have any pearl in here. We'll see what I can get out of it. I put a little water in the brush with the pearl. Yeah, I have some pearl here. I put a little water in the brush because I want it very thin. And then I'm going to paint the pearl very lightly over the whole piece. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Now I'm going to leave the underneath part, the, the, the teeth, and the, uh, the mouth and the white without the pearl over it and just do it on the top. Can you see the pearl? See the reflection of the pearl? But I watered it down. If you put it on too heavy, it really clouds, like this one is on heavier and it does cloud up the gray a lot more. So if you put a little water in the brush, I think it works out better. Okay, okay. And so the only other thing we have to do on him is his eye and then he's done. So you can take a marker. Now I have uh, two different markers here. I have the ultra fine point and I have the fine point. I'm gonna try doing his eye with the fine point. Now mine might not be dry enough. Like I said, you really need to let this dry. Oh yeah, I got this on here. Okay, got one eye there and one eye on the other side. 
Look how nice the marker does the eye. See the eyes with the marker? Okay, and there's your little shark. Okay, nice white on the bottom. And my other one might look a little different because my hand is different. I, the first one I did, I might have been a little heavier with the color. The second one I did, I, I put a little more water in the brush. So when you're doing art and when you're painting, no two pieces will ever be exactly the same. So it's your piece. There's no right or wrong. Just have fun with this and create it however you decide you want it to look. And if, if you look on Pinterest and you look online, you will see sharks. They could be in purple. They could, you know, it's just an artist's interpretation of how they want it to look. So you have colors, play with them. Uh, you have my email on that little strip of paper that I put in the kits. If you want to send me a picture of your piece when it's finished, I would love to see it. I, um, my passion in life has always been ceramics, and I hope I can pass that on to you, and I hope you enjoy this and you do more ceramics in the future. So thank you so much for taking this class, and I hope you'll do it again soon. Thank you.